Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. Today we're going to be wrapping up the if then else statement by talking about nested if statements as well as an alternative to the if statement which is going to help us out and help us avoid nested if statements because they can actually become very uh, very troublesome. So let's talk about nested if statements. Nested if statements can become very complex and essentially a nested if statement is where you have one if statement inside of another if statement which could also have another if statement inside of that if statement. So you can start developing different layers of if statements inside of other if or else statements. So it can get very complicated and the reason it gets complicated is because you have to start accounting for all the different possibilities of what somebody might put into their into your system. You know, somebody might put a number in and we have to try to figure out what code to run based upon what the user does with your system. So it, it creates a lot of complexity to have to keep nesting these if statements inside of each other. And because of that it becomes very difficult to troubleshoot the problem. And along with that, it's very easy to make mistakes and, and miss things and miss little evaluations, okay? Which also means that it's going to bloat your code. When you have so many different possibilities of what the user could be putting in and you have to write code in order to account for each one of those possibilities, you're going to end up writing a lot of code to try to compensate for every different possibility. Now let's look at what a nested if statement looks like. Pretty scary, huh? <laughs> okay, you've got a lot going on here. First, we've got an if statement that checks to see if x is greater than 9. If it is, then it drops down to the next if statement, which is saying, well, is it less than 20? If it's not less than 20, then we've got an else statement, which then also has an if statement inside of it, which is checking to see if x is less than 30. Okay. So if x is greater than 9, but it's less than 20, then it's going to hit this message box, x is between 10 and 19. And just so that you're aware, message box is a special function in uh, Visual Basic, which just basically pops up a little dialog window and displays a message to the user where they're going to click OK. Okay, you're just going to pop up a quick little message to them and tell them some bit of information. And when they click OK, then the rest of the script's going to go ahead and continue to run. Now you could do a lot more with message box, like have a yes, no button or a cancel, uh, resume type of thing. But uh, we'll get into that maybe in a different video later on. But for right now, just know that that's what the message box does. It just pops up a little dialog window to the user. Okay, so you can clearly see we've got a ton of logic in here trying to accommodate for all the different possibilities of what somebody might put in and it's kinda hard to flow through all this to try to find where is the problem in this okay so let's look at an alternative which is the select case statement a select case statement looks a lot simpler doesn't it okay this is essentially doing almost identical, uh, it's a little different syntactically, but it's doing essentially the same type of functions. The first thing it's going to do is we're going to give it an initial value that we're going to be evaluating against, which is x. Okay, I'm just going to draw it back here real quick. Notice that x is basically what we're evaluating in each one of these, right? So essentially with the select case statement, you're going to be doing the same thing, except you only have to say it once. You only have to name that value one time. Okay, So select case x. <clears throat> and now we're going to compare x against and, ch and check to see is it less than 9. And just so that you're aware, when you're evaluating one single value to compare against uh, whatever the first value, your initial value was, you have to use this is keyword. So case is less than 9. But when you're evaluating multiple values, you'll see that the syntax changes a little bit down here and you drop that is statement. Okay, so we're first we're going to check to see is x less than 9. If it is, x is less than 9. Okay, if case 10 to 19, then message box x is between 10 and 19. 
And what's essentially happening here is Visual Basic is going to first check this uh, equation here first. And if this is true, then it's going to go and run this code block and then skip everything else down below here and simply jump down to the end statement down at the bottom. Okay? And once Visual Basic finds a match, finds a true statement, then it will just go ahead and skip everything beneath it and jump down to that end statement. So, the next possibility is you can use the to keyword. And what we're doing here is we're saying check to see if x is between 10 and 19 and including 10 and 19. So is x 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, or 19? If it's any of those numbers, then pop up a little message box that says x is between 10 and 19. Down here we have a little different syntax. Notice that I've got everything comma separated, okay? And what this is is think of the comma as an or. So what we're saying is, is x 20 or 21 or 22 or 23 or 24 or 25 or 26, etc. If it's any of those values, if x is any of those values, it's going to pop up message box x is between 20 and 29. And so that can be very handy, especially when you start separating this out. Maybe you want 20 or 25 to cause this block to, to this code block to, to show up to the user. Okay? So this becomes very handy when you want very specific values that you want to compare that against. And just like with the if statement, you have the else keyword, which is for kind of a catch catch all. If none of these values up above evaluated to true, then run whatever is in this code block instead. Okay, and once again, just like with the if statement, the case else is completely optional. You don't need to have this in here, but if you don't, and none of these values are true, then nothing will happen, and, and the user might get a little confused, or you may not have something uh, in your code in order to catch that particular circumstance, and that's kind of important to probably do. And one other thing I just want to point out here before we move on to the next slide, you can theoretically just not have any code in here, you know, not do anything. So if X was anything from 10 to 19, you could leave this blank or comment this part out here, and what will happen is it'll evaluate to true, but since it won't have any code to run, it'll just skip on down to the end select statement. Okay? So, I, I don't I don't know of any reason why you would ever do that. You might as well just uh, not have any case else uh, and just let it skip on down. Um, but I can see that there might be a few times where maybe that would become uh, handy where you want it to not trigger the else if it is some sort of value. All right. Now I want to show you an alternative syntax or an alternative way to use the select case. Note that what we're doing here in, in this is we're saying evaluate value 1, which is x, and compare it against all of these other, uh, you know, is less than 9, 10 to 19. Okay, so it's evaluating all these other expressions to see if, it's, if, if x is one of those things. We're going to switch that up a little bit because one of the things you may have noticed in that previous slide, and actually I'll just go back to it, is we're not really able to do an AND or an OR here, okay? You can't use the AND keyword or the OR keyword like we could with the IF THEN ELSE statement. So we're not really able to evaluate multiple values unless they are specifically in a numeric form here, and that's not very handy. So if you want to have multiple evaluations for your select case, where you only want an instance, you only want a code block to run when two or more conditions are met, then you're going to need to use the select case true statement. And then you're going to need to actually put your variable or put your initial, your first value in each one of these, just like you would in the if statement. So what we're doing is we're saying select case true, and our first evaluation here is case where x is less than 9. So if x is less than 9, then run this message box. 
if x is greater than 9 and less than 20, then run this message box. And lastly, if x is greater than or equal to 20, and it's less than or equal to 29, then we can say message box x is between 20 and 29. So you can see this is essentially an if-then-else statement, but without having to do all those nested ifs, okay? It really helps with the flow of your logic, and when you cause problems, when you kind of skip something or screw up something, it becomes very easy to just look through this small bit of code to find, oh, well, that's where I forgot that part. All right, so let's go ahead and hop out into our code here, and let's look at a couple of examples. First, I just want to show you, this is a text box here, where the user is going to be able to enter some number into it. We've given it a name, txt number. Then we have a go button, which when it's clicked on, we have this event handler. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment out our if statement. This is the same big chunk of code that we had that I showed you in the slide. And you can see it's very complicated. It's multi-layered here. And if we made any sort of mistake in here, it's going to be a little harder to find, probably. All right, so let's go ahead and run this here. And let's try 40 is a good number. Well, nothing's happening. Why is that? Let's take a look at the code in the back here. We selected 40, didn't we? Okay, so 40 is greater than 9. That's true, okay? If 40, okay, so 40 is greater than 9. Is it less than 20? No. Okay, so drop into the else statements. Now we're going to check in this set of code block here. Okay, is 40 less than 30? No. Okay, so drop now into this else statement, where we've got another if statement. Is 40 less than 40? Nope. Okay, so, well, wait, that's the end of our code block. There's nothing more for it to do, so it just went on down to the end if statement. Okay, it's not going to run what's in the else block here, because this else block is only going to run if this initial value, this initial expression, returned false. And it didn't. It returned true. Remember, it was 40. 40 is greater than 9. So we missed 40 as a possibility in here in our code. Okay? And you can see how even though we have this big, large block of code, uh, you know, having to flow through all this in order to try to make sure that 40 is not a valid value and didn't have some other tor tor type of uh, syntactical error is very, very difficult to kind of flow through. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. Let's go on down to that select case statement that we built. Select case x. x is less than 9. Yada, yada, yada. I think we had a pretty good explanation on the slide. Let's go ahead and run this. Uh, let's try well, let's try 40. X is unknown. That's because it caught that else block down here, which we accounted for any other possibilities that we couldn't find up in here. All right. So let's go ahead and run a little bit more. Let's say, I don't know, 20. 20, X is between 29 and 29. That looks like that's all going to work. Okay. Let's go ahead and comment that out. And then just to show you that that other alternative way that we can use the case statement also works here. All right. But notice that I don't have any else statement. So when I go to do 40, it should just skip right on through here. Yep, nothing happens, right? But if I wanted to, I could do case else. Oops. Message box x is unknown and we're going to get essentially the same result x is unknown all right so you can see that that's a great alternative it does exactly the same thing this is much much smoother and better and easier to understand at least to my eyes hopefully yours as well than if we tried to have this big old uh section of nested if statements where it's kind of difficult to flow through all right, so there is the nested if statement and the select case statements. 
I hope you've learned something. Please feel free to subscribe and send me a message for any. If you have any suggestions for a video you'd like to see or any questions, feel free to send me uh, send me an email in my inbox on YouTube, and uh, we'll look forward to you at the next video.